Our patient is a 2006 Chrysler Town & Country. The owner said that they were driving down the road and all of a sudden it started to chug a little. They were on their way home, so that was good. As they were backing into their driveway, it really got worse and started chugging. So we're going to go ahead and diagnose this and see what's uh, causing all the, the complaint. So we do have a check engine light on. Um, the flashing of the dash, that's just the refresh rate of my phone that I'm using to record, so that's actually not an issue. But there's a check engine light on, so I'm doing a, just a full health report on the vehicle, checking for codes. I started it up just to see if I can recreate or, or what was actually happening, and you can feel it in your seat, actually some shaking, so it definitely sounds like there's a misfire of some kind. These are the codes we have, so our feelings were correct, there is a cylinder number 6 misfire. Uh, TCM low battery that's pretty common on these especially if you just replace uh, the battery you'll get this in the transmission pretty often uh, brake shift interlock and fog lamp not worried about those transponder communication failure uh, not sure what that is but our engine is definitely that misfire so let's uh, see why cylinder number six is misfiring so the way this engine is oriented is it's two four six one three five and just to confirm you can see it on the ignition maybe shadows shadows uh, can you see that number six right there so that's our number six misfire follow the plug and it brings you down to this first one here really easy to get to so glad it's uh, this one so what are the five things we need fast C fuel air spark timing compression so we want to run through each of these uh, that we suspect. Now I don't suspect timing uh, because it's just a single cylinder misfire. If a whole bank was misfiring, maybe. Uh, if we had multiple cylinder misfires, maybe. But just a single cylinder, uh, I don't uh, think timing would be an issue. Lots of things you can do initially. Uh, just pull a plug, you could do that. It's right there. Check for a spark. Uh, you can get an ignition waveform with an oscilloscope off the wire. Uh, you can do a relative compression test. So lots of ways to initi initialize uh, the approach. But pick one, and then the result of that first one, uh, go from there. So I always just like to do, well, what's easiest? Let's do that first. So first I decided just to grab spark off the ignition coil. Uh, it looks good. It may look like it's fluttering um, in the camera, but that's just the camera's ability to capture all of it. But to the naked eye, it looks really good. So you know the coil is at least sending spark. So I went ahead and pulled the plug on six, and I don't know if you can see. It also looks like a little carbon tracking on that um, little ceramic insulation there. What I'm gonna do is just swap this plug with number six and number f uh, two, four, number four. And see if the uh, code follows. So it did not change. It's still detecting a misfire on cylinder number six. Doing a quick relative compression test. Looks like all our spikes are even, so I don't see any cylinder dropout or concern with compression. So based on the injector waveform, I'd say the injector for cylinder number six is good, and I've also compared it with cylinder number one. That was the next easiest one I can get to. So uh, injectors look like uh, they're working. At least they're on time and the signal it looks very clean. Now let's hook up our probe. Hey, we're not getting anything. Let's uh, go to a different one. There we go. And this one is dead. Fortunately, I drive the same van, uh, Dodge Grand Caravan, just a different year, and it has the same coil pack, so, so I just took the coil pack out of mine, just set it in for a second, plugged it all back in, uh, and no misfires. So how did we miss that uh, when we first checked a uh, spark in the ignition? So interesting, we are plugged into that dead cylinder, or that uh, dead part of the coil. We're getting spark. When we first checked the ignition coil, we used this to check for spark. It looks like we're getting spark, doesn't it? 
lights lighting. Let me hook it up to a different cylinder and see if the camera can pick up something. Does the camera pick up on the intensity of this spark versus the other? And I just have it on the, the spark plug over. See how much more intense this is? We got the new coil in. If you need to replace yours, it's really not much. You got two eight millimeter bolts up here. Possibly um, back here is a 10 millimeter, just a little lock bolt or nut that you can get to uh, from back here with an extension, but maybe not. If somebody's already been back here, I'd, it's possible that they didn't retighten really tighten that. Um, and then this comes off and then it's two 10 millimeter bolts. One here, uh, and then maybe you can't see it, but it's under the, it's under the power stand. Well, anyway, so that's how you replace it. And then I like to mark these back ones, uh, one, two, three, one, two, and then I don't mark the one, but you can mark the one. So putting the plug wires back on are really easy. And then the front uh, are easy because it's one to one, two to two, three to three or 246, 246. So anyway, that is the replacement. So now we can look at the data. Confirmation, uh, no misfires. So, uh, interesting. I would call that a diagnostic blunder uh, on my part. Uh, what was the problem? Misleading information. And that, that was my fault. I should have cued in on the intensity of that uh, spark plug tester that would have said hey right away we got a spark issue uh, I didn't so now I went down this rabbit hole uh, this trail of trying to find uh, the other things remember we went down fast C fuel air spark uh, timing compression I started with spark to me it looked good and then I went down the line um, and couldn't find anything so what did I do fortunate for me I had a van of the same but you don't always have uh, a parts car lying around. Um, so, what do you do? I don't know. Um, you can't just, you know, guess. Well, you can. <laughs> you can just throw parts at it, but but is that what you should do? Especially if it's not your vehicle. This is somebody else's car, and they're charging you to diagnose it uh, properly. So you want definitive proof of the issue. So anyway, uh, I learned a lesson. Maybe this helps you learn a lesson. I'm not. Uh, too proud to admit sometimes uh, make mistakes but we did diagnose it properly it eventually got diagnosed it just took longer than uh, it should have but cars up and running uh, good to go happy customer has this ever happened to you comment down below uh, diagnostic blunders we all have them from time to time all right well thanks for watching uh, like subscribe see you on the next one